Hey. Gotta make sure that plugs in. Oh, plug. Yeah. Yeah. Back, so many people. Backup for your backups, right? Just like your rods. <laughs> yeah. So many people forget to plug their boat. I know that sounds pretty elementary for boaters, but <laughs> it does happen. Grease these so your boat stays on the road. These lights. Look at this, though. I mean, if you don't want to deal with the trailer, just do that. I mean, seriously, you guys, if, if, if you don't even want to tow a trailer, be that guy. <laughs> just have it hanging out the back of your rig. <laughs> so awesome. And on this boat, we have our main engine, and then this one's off of a battery, and we're kind of concerned with the battery today. We had a trickle charger on it. We haven't been fishing a whole lot. Um, it's just been sitting out in Vinny's driveway, but we also have this backup and this one's just a, a pull start. So just in case, just in case, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yeah. You never know, uh, when these things are going to go down or why they go down or could be any type of issue, but have a kind of a backup plan because coming down this, coming down this and losing power, you'll get into these rocks and flip your boat and just have a bad day all around. Anyway, we're gonna launch this bad guy, let's go. All right, we are gonna launch at Centennial. Centennial Parking Campground for me, this spot. I live on K Beach, so I like this spot. But this water, if you look at it, this time of year, the level's way up and it's moving a lot faster and it's a lot siltier looking. So it uh, definitely turns out to be like a more of a chocolate milk, less blue, a lot more mud, especially down here. And uh, we'll check Vinny out as he backs down this ramp and puts us in. It's nice to have two people helping doing this. One to catch this boat and bring it over because you always got to launch this boat and then you got to go park the truck. And I could sit here and take care of this boat. So that's what we're going to do. All right, Cap, bring her back. the water back in it everybody knows how good this feels when you finally make it back to where you're supposed to be just, ah. feels good right here <laughs> it's for the soul <laughs> here's the scene down at centennial this morning might be hard to see from here but some of these guys will set up their fishing poles and rod holders, like that whole section where there's no people, they're all sitting up in their cars, you guys. All those guys up there standing up there. Oh yeah, let's take a look down there. These guys, these guys up here, they're all sitting in their vehicles and then they've got their rods down here in these rod holders and they're fishing right now. They cast out and they let their their bait do all the work for them. The rest of these guys, these guys are, are flipping for salmon, trying to floss them out of here. But all that, those guys are just tailgating. It's a tailgate party out here. Ow, ow. Tell me what's happening with your uh, outboard. <laughs> uh, so this is my dad's boat, first of all. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah where's the maintenance on this, dad? <laughs> Just I kidding. have not called him to let him know. Yeah. But the battery did die. Uh oh. And I had it on the triple charge all morning. Yep. And it seemed to be starting up uh, just fine. But just a little bit ago, I'm trying to trim it up. It's uh, not really firing or not really lifting up. So I'm just trying to nice so, steady move. So there's not enough battery power to tilt the engine up is what I'm is what's being reported to me by the captain uh, makes me a little uneasy but as you get going these outboards they should trickle charge into the battery for you too with their alternator and uh, we're just hoping to keep this guy running at least until we get to the fishing spot <laughs> Let me see those things again. 
man. You ain't tired yet. Oh my goodness, that's a toad. Ow! Right there, guys, they're making it happen out here. I'm loving it. Woo! Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Seeing everybody having a good time. Just showed up to the island and all the landings are vacant. I don't know, let's go around here, take a peek. I always like to come up here and take a little peek at the boat ramp. Look at that. Nobody in, nobody's home. The whole place is vacant. Well, I guess we got it all to ourselves. Doesn't mean there's no fish here. Just means everybody wanted to sleep in, I guess. That's okay. That's okay, we'll get set up. And uh, I'll show you how to set up and we'll get, get flipping in here. The Kenai King salmon is still under like a huge restoration project. So fish and game shut down using bait, no salmon row. So we're stuck using artificials and lures and flies. That's okay, cause these guys will strike that too. And I'm fishing with that bead right now. And I'm, I've already caught a trout and we're expecting Dolly Varden and hopefully some of those silvers start biting. If we get a little bit of rain, I bet that bite turns on. Let's just stay after it. Look at that. When you guys are out there fishing and flipping for sockeye and you can't get your hook all the way to the bottom, put that on. You can Put that on right underneath <laughs> your swivel, and uh, that guy right there will get your hook all the way to the bottom when you're flipping out here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Vinny's secret weapon. No, that's an anchor. That's an anchor for a drift boat if you've never seen one. Works. Big, Works. big old hunk of lead right there. Yep, it does work. Holds this. Holds this guy. Holds this guy. Here's a, here's a secret weapon right here for you. Flesh fly, kind of looks like a chunk of meat when it's in the water, like salmon flesh, and then a little, a little egg, like a piece of salmon roe. And these are hugely popular with the trout dollies and the silver salmon, and then also this guy, same type of fly, but it's chartreuse and it's got the glitter in it. The little streamers with the black eyes on it. And that little guy also will imitate a piece of meat floating down the river for these hungry silvers, steelhead, ready to hit. So I'm gonna get rigged up with that. I'll probably go with this this one first. I'm gonna go with that one first and give it a few shots here and see if anything's still hungry this morning. I do get asked this a lot. I'm using 20 pound monofilament mainline down to my reel. And that's just 20 pound on there. And there's just some thick fly backing behind that but I'm going to tie on a leader onto this swivel right here. And I'm gonna make it about four and a half to five feet long. And this leader line right here is just 17 pound monofilament. And I like going with something a little bit thinner right now when I'm fishing with something like this and that I'm going to mess around with. A couple of little split shots to see what you wanna do is check your water current for the day because this thing uh, raises and lowers all the time and I'm going to work on trying to get my hook and my weights to fall at the same exact level so they're drifting through parallel to the bottom of the riverbed and this spot and this slough is usually filled up with trout and the silvers will sit right ahead of them right there 
and that's what we're gonna work on. Here's that setup I was telling you guys about. Got the flesh fly. Let me set this down real quick. Got the flesh fly here. Leader line running up, running up, running up. All the way up here to the top. And there's my weight set up. Leader line tied into the bottom of that snap swivel. And then on that dead end, I like to tie a little a little tiny knot right there at the end of that dead tail so these don't slide off as easily. But if they wanna go, that's fine. That way they're not sliding up and down this. And I don't always tie up like this because it takes a little bit of extra time. And during sockeye season, it really doesn't matter when there's that many fish in the, in the water. But right now, I've got time to make this exactly how I want it. And that's what I'm flipping with today. Right here on the tip of the South Island of Rotary, out here with Vinny, working those fish. Oh yeah, look at that. That thing looks like a big old healthy trout, doesn't it? Look at that guy. I don't know. Maybe it's a kind of a wore out sockeye perhaps. I got my net man coming in. Vinny on the net. And we're gonna see what this looks like. Maybe first, I don't know, it's hard to tell. It'll give me kind of a weak fight, like a maybe a pink wore out sockeye. Let's take a look. What are we looking at? Oh my! Look at that! Nice. Is that thing still chrome? Do you want to go in the smoker? Look at that thing! All right, all right. There's there's a fish. There's something called a like a fish eater. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we need. Need one of them. A detainer like that for one of these guys. Yeah, not too bad. Not too shab. Yeah. I haven't seen one in a while, so. <laughs> That's what they look like. Right there. It's still chrome enough and got most of its scales that we'll, uh, we'll put this guy right in the smoker. Look at that. All right. One in the box. Well, we are giving up on rotary. This spot's not producing a whole lot of fish today. Not right now while we're here. One thing you gotta remember too is this is all influenced by the, the Cook Inlet, the ocean out there. And if there's no fish, you could, you at this time of year anyway, you could just wait like six hours and that next push of fish will come in and you'll have a shot to get some. Okay, <laughs> oh my goodness. I just caught a fish that looks like I feel right now. Old, wore out, and bet out of shape. Have you guys ever seen something like this? Look at this, look at this fish. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh man, look at that. Oh. You can't even hold it, it's so weird looking. Look at this guy, I feel so bad for it. Uh, look at this. This is a sockeye salmon, not a humpy. And Whoa. this thing is in rough shape. Oh. Anyway, that's about what they're looking like this time of year. All beat up, all twisted and snarly and hooked out. And it's just the end of the summer, man. Alaskan summers are, are long and hard on a guy. And there's proof of it right there. I'm not the only one feeling wore out. That right there is silver salmon. Oh, there's a hook on the, on the is there? Belly, yeah. Oh yeah. Somebody else's rig. Oh, look at that guy. Mm. Upward swing. I think I got him though. It's uh, right there. Somebody else's jewelry broke off. But. First one of the day. It wasn't a super hard fighter. I thought it was a sockeye, actually. But that is a silver salmon right there. 
Is it a silver or a coho? How do you know? Vinny's on. What? Yeah. There you oh, go. Man. Tight lines. <laughs> Tight lines. I didn't even get mine off the deck. There's my sockeye. That's my, that's my whole plan there. <laughs> when Ryan's out of the water, that's my time to fish. Yes, it is. Let me get this net. Crazy fish, bro. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, into my line. Went into my line. Watch out for that. He's right over there. <laughs> there he is. It's a nice silver salmon. It's a good looking silver salmon. Oh no, right out of the net. There he goes. There he goes. Caught him on the bead. Whipping the bead out. He's coming this way. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, yes! Oh, look at the size of that one. There you go. That, that right there. Oof. Oof. You better bonk him. You better bonk him again. Now, show off that silver. So, silver or coho? No, seriously, that thing is such a pretty color. Look at the color. Oh man, it's green and it's got the dark spots. Comes down here. This one's a nice, thick, strong one. Look at the tail. Ooh, these fish right here. This is exactly what we're after. This one's pushing you know, eight, nine pounds though. And and you could see the difference in this one with this big hook right here and those teeth. Don't bite me. He's trying to bite me. <laughs> no, they will, they'll bite onto you. But look at the, look at the way that hooks right there. Such a funny looking fish, these, these silver salmon and they are nice fighters though, huh? Yeah, you're loving that. Yeah, what a good feeling. Yes, yeah. in the box. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a little spunk left in it. I think so. Got a... Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he is. That's what you don't want to do. Oh, get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 River Silver Salmon we are after. Look at the size of this. This thing's over 10 pounds, could be close to 11 or 12. And it was such a crazy fight. It, it slammed it and ran, but it did its first jump and it twisted itself up in my leader line. And then it was wrapped like four or five times. And then it just kind of like snared it as I was bringing it in. It was a super fast fight. It was like the guy didn't even have a chance after that happened, Whoa. but it was crazy. Right there, came out the bottom of the mouth and blew out the other side of the eye. But look at the size of that, such a thick tail. And this fish is exactly what we're looking for. Oh. Well, there you have it. Look at that. Sockeye salmon, late August. And these ones are pretty nice. These three that we took, um, we are taking three silvers here, two big males and then the female. These two guys were chasing after her for sure, but they all ran into us and this is what you get. But some of these guys got some nice big tails. Look at that. Look at the size of this one's tail though. It's like twice the thickness of a, of a sockeye. Real dark and stubby. But this one right here is a is a real bruiser. Real bruiser of a fish. Back to the launch. Captain Benny put us on him today. Yeah, that's good. We're gonna get this boat loaded up. Go clean our fish over here at this little station they got down here at Centennial. I mean this 
this already is too much work for me carrying these yeah. fish. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I know. We gotta clean off all the seagull mess first. Table. <laughs> the baby table. <laughs> I mean, his little table. I know, these ones are kind of tall, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Look, at, look at the silver. So, Vinny, are those coho or are they silvers? Uh. <laughs> Coho. Uh, coho. Those ones, these, these two right here are coho. Yeah. Yeah. And that one's that a silver. That one's a silver. <laughs> coho. We've decided yeah. that coho are the, the big, super impressive ones. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Right? Ah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Scrub them down. Scrub a dab. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Just pulls all that right off of it. So nice. Yeah, it just takes takes about a second. And then we got these down here, so this is cool. And we can do a little assist with the water. Okay, look at that. Pop all those scales and slime off. So nice. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, scales and slime. And then let me see your brush. Everyone asks about these. That's a, just an old wire brush. And then it's got a composite handle. I like I like this style because the Because you can go like hand, this. You can do that. Or yeah, like perfect. that. Yeah. It like hangs on to your hand for you. Yeah, I like doing that. That's what like I like. This. Yeah. So you can scrub them up like this. Just just takes about a second. And it's it's nice because when you get it home to the cutting board, you don't have hardly any of that that river left on it, that slime and the blood and the sea lice and the scales and everything else. Squeegee it off with the back of the blade and then always, always just pop that belly off first. You can get that belly right out of your way. Look at, look at how nice this, this makes the belly, the bottom of the filet. It's like just a nice straight. And then you get around all these fins and you can eat that too. If you want to eat that, put that in the smoker. That's totally a thing. Just get rid of that guy. <laughs> yeah, toss that guy to the seagulls. We'll eat that all day. And Look at the bottom cut on this filet. It's just it's just nice and clean now. Oh yeah. That's a that's a nice big coho. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good meat though. I mean, it's a little bit paler than a sockeye or a red, you know, they call them red because the meat's like red. I mean, look at the, look at this. This is a, this is a sockeye I just filleted and we'll set it next to the silver. So you can actually see, see the difference. Oh, wow. See how much redder the sockeye is mm -hmm. versus the silver. It's still nice and orange, but it's, it's not dark red like that. And it's, it's really not as firm as the sockeye either. But, I mean, size-wise, it's almost double the size of this fish, so, yeah. And I'm, like, guarding these from all those guys. Look at them. <laughs> They're like, ah! Yeah, they are. <laughs> so, we're just gonna fillet these up and get them in the brine.